The Knights of Columbus is one of the groups that helped convince the U.S. government to make last year's genocide declaration. Joining us now is Andrew Walther, Vice President of Communications and Strategic Planning for the Knights of Columbus. So Andrew, it's been one year since the declaration of the genocide, and yet the genocide continues. Have there been any progress? Well, you know, for the immediate aftermath of that declaration, we were told by people in Iraq and personally talking to some of the UN and US officials there that they weren't really concerned about the communities but only about the individuals. Now I got a call just a week or so ago from an archbishop there who said that in the last couple of months things have started to change. There's a new openness from the US government to helping the people there that are Christians and other religious minorities in a more direct way. So things seem to be moving in the right direction. Representative Jeff Fortenberry told us yesterday about a bill he's drafting that would allow prosecution of groups that are accessories to ISIS. What, that's nice it's, it, if it happens, but what else do you think Congress and the White House needs to do from here? Well, you know, that's an important piece is prosecuting, bringing the perpetrators to justice. Another important piece, Congressman Chris Smith and I were there in December, and he has a bill, H.R. 390, with bipartisan co-sponsorship. Representative Eshoo, a Democrat, and a number of other Democrats have co-sponsored it as well. And this would... Uh, direct the aid that the U.S. government is giving directly to these minority communities, including the Christians that were targeted for genocide and have been too often overlooked, especially in direct U.N. and U.S. assistance. President Trump's updated executive order on refugees eliminated the religious exemption. What do you think that means for persecuted Christians who are trying to get into the U.S.? Well, you know, interestingly, President Obama's uh, outlook on refugees from Syria, for example, was to prioritize minority refugees. And of course, it didn't work out that way at all. 98.2% of them were from the majority population, not the minority population in fiscal 2016. So I think that what's really important is the outcome, more than stating that there's going to be specific help for people that have survived genocide. What's important is if the numbers start to actually align with the population. People should be getting in at least at the rate in which they existed in the population prior to the start of the war in Syria and in Iraq. And in the case of genocide survivors, probably perhaps at an even greater rate. It seems like things are getting better with at least the last couple of months. Absolutely. I mean, that's what we're hearing. They're, the people in Iraq, the Christians in Iraq, are very hopeful that things are going to begin to change in a way that means they are no longer left behind. And that's what's happened up until now in, in too many of the direct U.S. and U.N. policies. These communities have just not received any kind of direct assistance. And so the fact that they see that changing and the fact that there could be some positive outcomes in other ways, I think that's what people need to be excited about. That's the opportunity here. We used the right words a year ago. And this year, a new Congress and a new administration have the opportunity to use the right actions. Andrew Walther, Vice President of Communications and Strategic Planning for the Knights of Columbus. Thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you.